Hey fellow astronomers, just wanted to kind of follow up with the last video on uh, the roof uh, control system that, uh, that we threw out there. Um, and just wanted to basically post this for anybody else that would like to, to do this. Um, if you've got uh, any kind of roof system that simply has a, a switch that's a momentary switch, you know, one way to open and one way to close, uh, this is a really cheap uh, system that you can add to your roof control set, uh, your, your, your current uh, roof system to completely control and automate it. It's kind of nice because it's completely Wi-Fi, so there's a web interface. Um, so from your PC, you can click open, you can click close, it'll open and close your dome. I've also written the um, ASCOM compatible drivers for it as well, so you can throw it in Sequence Generator Pro or whatever you're using um, that's ASCOM compatible and uh, that will also open and close it for you. So that's kind of nice at the end of your sequence. You can just, you know, if you want to set that as part of your close sequence for the night, uh, that it parks your scope and closes your roof, you can totally do that. Uh, more importantly, we had actually built it um, for remote imaging. Uh, our roof uses 12 volts. Um, it's just got a 12 volt battery that we've got on a trickle, trickle tri charger that I uh, showed in the last video. Um, but the really nice thing about that is, is if we lose power, um, uh, essentially it'll sense uh, that our network's down and therefore, and this is on, the, the Arduino system is, is on that battery as well. Uh, so if the Arduino can't talk to the PCs, you know, power went out, uh, whatever, a PC locked up, that sort of thing. Uh, you can, it'll simply close the dome for you. So it's a kind of a protection in that, that sense. Um, and, uh, and also uh, another thing was just the fact that um, I, I did put it, the Arduino now goes out, it grabs the internet time. Um, there's not a built-in timer on these little Arduino, so it goes out, grabs the internet time, and then what it does is you can put in your latitude and longitude, and it will also then calculate your sunrise. Um, I forget the gentleman's code that um, he, he posted it on that gives sunrise and set set for, for latitude and longitude. So I grabbed that, which is really slick. So you can then um, take that sunrise, I subtract 30, 30 minutes for, for basically civil twilight, and it'll automatically close your roof if, if you so desire. So that's kind of nice too. You can just be imaging away, and it doesn't matter, you know, the roof's gonna close half an hour before sunrise. So that's kind of nice. Power goes out, your roof's gonna close for you, or again with the SGP. So how does this all work? Um, getting back to your uh, current system that you probably have, again, it's probably just got a toggle switch on top. So if you take off the, 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 the panel and look, that switch is, is basically gonna just look like this. I was trying to find a momentary one. This is actually a rocker switch. Um, but at the end of the day, you got a center, pin and it's simply you know if the switch is in that position it closes that side and if it's in this side it closes this side so all, all that switch is doing is shorten out one side or the other that's it um, so at the end of the day that's all we need to do so in comes the little um, uh, these are 12 bucks on Amazon they're actually just two little relays now these are, are rated for I think 250 uh, volts AC and 30 amps so they're more than adequate for whatever is going through your roof um, so essentially uh, these are, there's a, a center pin and there's a normally closed and a normally open pin. So uh, if we put the, the center to say the center here and the normally open to let's say this side, well when we turn on this relay it would close this side. Now to do the other side we don't, we, we do kind of a little trick in that we take the normally closed and we, we put a little jumper and go to the ground. And then we take the open side and go to this side. And the reason you just basically do that is that when this relay, if this relay turns on and that one was on, it wouldn't matter because this normally open or normally closed now opens and this should shut off. So there's no possible way if you wire it up that way, it's impossible to like short out both sides at the same time or something like that. So there we go. We've got our simple little, whatever your box is, you open it up, you got your three pins and one center goes to the center here and then the other two are just gonna go to each side of, of the relay. Done, okay. Well, where's the Arduino come in? Well, to turn on one of these relays, on the other side, there's basically into this unit, and I didn't have to use, I could actually, um, if I was 
take it to the next step would be to actually just put this on our own, do our own uh, printed circuit boards. But these things, like I say, are 12 bucks, who cares? So uh, this, they essentially take five, I think it's between five and 12 volt input is what they'll take. And then they've got two more pins that the Arduino simply sends a three volt. If, it, if it's less than, I think, a half a volt, it's off. If it's over uh, uh, two volts, or I forget exactly what it is, um, it'll turn that relay on. So it's really simple. Um, there's just two inputs. One input turns one relay on. The other input turns on the other relay. So there's our relay. So the relay then goes to our Arduino. And that's essentially what we have right here. Now, we also, there's one other kicker on this the Arduino is uh, these cheap ones these are five bucks they like uh, five volts they're not 12 volt tolerant I don't even think they're nine volt I think they'll take up to like six or six and a half volts that's it um, so in comes a little um, there's probably better ones of these as well but these actually are, are pretty slick and they're I think they were four dollars on on Amazon uh, that I got. Again, I'll post all this. But these will take anywhere from zero to forty-eight or twenty-four volts input, and they're a variable. There's a little potentiometer. They can change the output anywhere from 0.8 to I think uh, fourteen or sixteen volts output. So you have your twelve volts from your battery come in, and then just put a voltmeter across there and adjust that potentiometer to how you get five volts out. That five volts goes to our Arduino, and the five volt goes to our, our relay. So there's our Arduino sitting there. He gets ground and five volts in, and on the output side of them, those two are simply controlling the relay one way or the other. That's it. Um, now, how do we sense when the domes or the roof is open and closed? That, what I went with is, is uh, these two um, limit switches, also on Amazon. I think they are, they were like 18 or 20 bucks a piece, so that's the most expensive part, but they're kind of nice because they're, they're really durable and they're rated for outdoors and all that kind of stuff. Um, in the last video, that's actually how we have them installed on our outside, which just got a block of wood that comes over and hits. And that's, that's actually the sensor. So the reason we've got two is um, the second one. Let's just start with the second one. That one actually should never get hit. The point of the second rocker switch is if something happens, the Arduino wasn't doing what it was supposed to be doing, whatever, and the roof keeps opening, it'll actually hit this rocker. And that is simply in line with our, our relay switch. So between the relay switch and uh, our relay and our actual dome switch. Just in line here, we've got that little rocker switch. So if the dome either being open or closes ever hits that, it simply opens that line and therefore it, it doesn't matter what's happening with the Arduino, what went on, that simply is our fail safe. So that's kind of a, again, just a nice production that if your dome or the roof, I keep saying dome because I'm working on a on an automated dome controller with a encoder uh, using the same type of thing right now as well. I hope to have that finished probably in the next couple months. But um, anyhow, if it ever comes back and hits this, this is just your fail safe. Technically, you really don't even need that one, but it's certainly nice to know that. All right, again, the Arduino blew up, didn't work, whatever. It's going to come over here, and that just that opens the circuit, and everything's done. The first one is then actually going to the Arduino. So the Arduino, we have two outputs controlling the relay, and we have two inputs, one for uh, the closed relays or the closed position of the roof and the other ones for the open and that's also really simple on the Arduino um, it just you you specify those as input pins if they are grounded they're low if they sense 3.3 volts so 3.3 volts is running across them you run 3.3 volts through these again it's all low voltage it's completely fine no worries um, it'll give a, a high pin on the Arduino um, so when we actually go to open the roof um, or a power is applied, what it does is it simply looks at all the switch positions and says, okay, is the dome, uh, is the roof currently closed or is it currently open um, or is it unknown? And I'll show you that in the web interface. Um, then if you say open, what it does is there's just a timer and again, you can adjust this. So because everybody's dome is going to be, or roof is going to be a little bit different, um, ours, for example, takes like 25 seconds. So what we do is we set a timer for 23 seconds and then it goes into a bump. So for 23 seconds, it just simply closes the switch or closes the relay, which makes the roof open. It opens and after 23 seconds, it then pulses. So um, 
most of these roof controls are not variable frequency. I mean, VFD drives or anything like that. They don't even have pulse width modulated uh, uh, DC. They're just 12 volts one way, 12 volts the other way to the motor, and the motor is either running or not. So by, by kind of um, uh, putting our own pulse width is what I've essentially done after 23 seconds. It then goes into what I just call the bump cycle, which just goes on and on, on and off, on and off on the relay. At um, uh, Again, and you can set this for your own roof, but it's kind of nice because it just basically slowly bumps the roof forward. So it's closing, and then it gets to that last two seconds, and it kind of just bumps it slowly closed or slowly open which is which is kind of nice and those parameters are in the arduino uh you completely customize you know change whatever settings you want in there to make it work for you um and for your your roof but um overall it's pretty pretty simple um again cost wise you got 10 bucks for these cool cases um you know a buck or whatever a couple bucks for the switch if you want i went with nice 12 volt connectors if you want to wire battery directly up to the 12 volts in go for it it's however you want to do it um, but as far as raw cost 10 bucks for the box five bucks for an arduino four bucks for a power inverter uh, like i say the the switches are, are about 20 bucks a piece and we went with four of those so you do got 80 bucks there um and 12 bucks for your thing and like i say whatever wiring you want to use so anyhow hopefully that um um uh, explains uh, at least the kind of the mechanical side I may make something up with the Arduino code just because that was kind of fun as well as I would certainly like to make up something on how the ASCOM drivers work because that's a whole area that um, I think they've done a great job but it seems like unless you're a hardcore coder it's kind of hard to do and it really shouldn't be um, so clear skies guys